We're continuing our lectures in analytics for business and economics. Um, and we're going to spend on lecture nine, we're going to do formulas. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. Let's begin talking about formulas by understanding what a formula is. And we'll come right back to our, our typical setup. The lecture notes are on the left-hand side of the screen. I have our studio cloud on the right-hand side of the screen. And we will, let's get started. So a formula in R is a really, really useful thing. It lets us kind of sort of set up what we want to do before we actually know what we want to do. Okay, so formula in R is specifically a relationship between variables. It's oftentimes used in statistical models, although we also use formulas in um, things like data visualization to, in order to show the relationship between variables visually, as well as analyzing them with a statistical model. So um, there's a lot of uses for formulas, although I will admit they're deceptively simple. They can be a little bit confusing because, um, well, R is a little bit weird in its syntax. So let's talk just a little bit about what a basic formula is. In general, it's going to be some dependent variable. All right, so we can see we have here Y. And then a tilde. Now remember the tilde is right up over the top of the tab key by the one key. It's that squiggly looking dash. Um, and then x. All right, so that's our independent variable. In other words, we would read this function that we're seeing here, y tilde x, as something along the lines as y as a function of x. Y is our dependent variable or our response variable. X is our independent variable or our predictor variable. In other words, we're going to do something to X and see how that influences Y. And so if this were a statistically designed experiment and we were inside of a lab, X would be the factor or the variable that we're changing and Y would be what we're looking at to see what happens. Right? In outside of a laboratory in what we call observational data, or data we observe from the, 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 the real world, uh, we don't get to do it that way. So we have to use statistical tricks in order to try to coax out what that relationship will be. Well, we'll talk all about that in, in later chapters, but for right now, we're gonna use this really handy construct called a formula. A nice thing about a formula is a formula can be saved. So like, for example, say I want to do a couple of different um, statistical operations on the same formula, well, I can then take and store this formula as an object, right? My dot formula, and I'm going to use the assignment operator here to store this x tilde or this y tilde x um, inside of it. Then I could pass that formula to a function. In this case, ln, that's linear model. We'll talk about that when we get to regression. Um, and, and there you go. Where formulas, I think, get a little confusing is number one, I don't know what X or Y is in this case. Okay, um, I just know that there's some variable named Y and there's some variable named X, and the variable named Y is my dependent variable or my response variable, and some variable X is my independent variable or my predictor variable. Other than that, I know nothing. That's all I have in the formula. Now, in some sense, it's really, really handy. In another sense, it can be a little confusing because where did this X and Y come from? Well, if I look down here in, say, this LM function that I'm looking at right here, even though we don't know what an LM function is exactly yet, but that's okay, we'll know it later. Um, I have another argument called data that tells the function where to find X and Y. And if I pass this formula, x tilde y, or my formula here, then inside this data frame called my.data, there had better be an x and there had better be a y. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error. Okay, so we can talk a little bit more about formulas here in that we can extend the formula to include more than one thing. So, for example, we have y as a function of x1 and x2. Now, here's where I think formulas in R get a little complicated, a little bit confusing. This plus right here is not really a plus inside of a formula. We're not saying x1 plus x2. All right, we're not adding them together. Um, we're anding them. 
together. In other words, I want y to be some function of x1 and x2. I don't know what that is. It could be beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2, something like that. You know, kind of a standard linear regression-y looking type model. Or it could be e to the x1 minus pi over 2 thirds by 42 seconds times x2 to the beta 3. Uh, you know, some stupid screwy thing like that. That didn't even make sense. That was just a string of weird random math stuff. Um, doesn't matter. We don't know ahead of time what this function will be. We just know that we have one dependent variable, that's y, or response variable, and two independent variables or predictor variables, x1 and x2. All right, and so we would basically say this is a model where y is being modeled as a function of x1 and x2. Now, when I say a function of, I mean that in, this, in the mathematical sense of the word. X1 and X2 are two arguments that go into this function that gives us a prediction of Y. Okay, um, And so some of the syntax, I think, or the, 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 the way we write formulas in R, I think is a little confusing because, you know, like the plus. All right, that means addition to me, right? Well, here it really doesn't mean addition. It means and. So remember, when we put pluses here, instead of summing these two, we're anding these two. And I know, anding is not really a word, but you get what I'm talking about. We can also use this special symbol called a dot, which gets overused a little bit in R. But basically, when a dot is all by itself, it usually means something along the lines of all of something. All right, so let's say, for example, I want Y to be a function of everything else in the data frame. Okay, and we talked about data frames last lecture, right? but everything in that data frame I want it to be. So I could have y just as a function of everything. All right, And so if I give that to this LM model, which we I know we haven't talked about linear regression, but this is one of the most common places where we'll use a formula. All right, This is just going to say, OK, y is my dependent variable. And every other variable in this data frame, my.data, is going to be one of my regressors. Okay. There's also other things we can do, like, for instance, we could use the, the colon here. This has a pretty specific meaning, and it's a little bit, uh, to be honest, in, in formulas, it's a little bit confusing. You just have to remember it. Um, it's not absolutely in, in, in a imperative that you remember all of this stuff for this module. Once we get into linear regression, you'll use it a little bit, and it'll make a little more sense. Um, but in particular, it's kind of handy because what this does is it gives us the interaction between x1 and x2. In other words, it multiplies the two together. So in other words, y as a function of x1 times x2. And you ask, well, why don't we just use the the star, which is kind of typically used in computers for multiplication? Why don't we just use that? Well, because we've already, we use it in another place. The star symbol gives us the full interaction. So in other words, if I do x1 star x2, I'm really going to get the formula x1 and x2 and x1 times x2. OK, which is kind of is it, 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 believe it or not, this is really, really handy. It may not be particularly handy in this course because we may not get to stuff that it's useful for. But say if you take Econ 426, which is kind of the next course after this one, um, it's pretty darn handy. OK, so that is what we talk about with formulas. So I, I talk through that because there's a lot of stuff here. Let's just do some examples. So let's go ahead. What What is this, this formula going to do? Well, the first thing, I don't have a my data um, data frame. So let's make a my data data frame. Um, let's do my dot data. OK. And um, oh, I do have a my data dot data frame. It is my, you know, it's my empty cars. Let's use empty cars. Let's do that. 
Okay, let's just use my data. We'll use it just like that. We just won't use the X and the Y. All right, so let's start out with MT cars. And I know in MT cars we have, um, let's do my dot formula. Okay, and F O R M U L A. There's nothing fancy, there's nothing special about this form, this name right here. This is just a name I'm giving it. All right, I don't have to call it my formula, I could call it Bob. Okay, just so you know, that's a terrible variable name. Great name for a person, terrible name for a variable because I don't know what it means. All right, I have a really good friend named Bob. So Bob, yeah, I know I know what Bob means in real life. But in computer science, I'm not exactly sure what a variable named Bob is. But the point is we can call it anything we want to. Um, you should use readable variable names. But we'll use Bob for right now. And we will say, I want to have miles per gallon as a function of horsepower. All right, that makes sense. So the more horsepower, one would think the lower miles per gallon. That's what we would think. So we have uh, miles per gallon versus horsepower. Okay, and I can run that. And we'll see right here I have Bob. It's unknown. Um, because it's basically, it's a formula. Let's go ahead and I'm going to, Bob, I'm going to run this. Bing. Gives me this formula. MP, MPG um, is a function of horsepower. MPG is a function of HP. MPG is my dependent variable. HP is my independent variable. Yeah, but I don't know what to do with that. So let's, let's, let's do something with it. The first thing I could do, we, we could do, this line right here. All right, I could do a linear regression. Um, not that it's going to mean very much right now, because, well, we haven't covered linear regression yet. Only instead of my formula, I'm going to put in Bob. And I'll run this. And my data not found. Why is my data not? Oh, because I had my underscore data. There we go. There we are. And looky there, nothing too special. I'm not going to go into this yet because we haven't done this. We haven't done linear models yet. So let's do something that's a little more approachable. How about we plot the data? So let's do plot. Okay, and I'm going to give it Bob. And I'm going to tell it where to find the data. There it is. And if I wanted to, and why is this really handy? Well, I, I, I could do things like, for example, um, let's say I want to do a, be, uh, no, I want to do a best fit line through copy. All right, we did this once before in that kind of R run through. So I'm just going to keep all of this stuff right here. And I'm going to say um, fit, equals LM. Notice exact same, exact same um, arguments there. And then I'm going to do a B line fit. And bang, I put a line in there. Okay, so let me let me go through this really quickly. The first thing I did was I used a linear model to figure out what the, the equation of this line was. Right? We'll talk about that in linear regression. Then I use the plot function to create a scatter plot. We did this in that overview of R, that really quick um, kind of teaser I did in the very beginning of the first module about R. Um, and I went through a full kind of analysis of simple analysis of some data. Uh, so you can go back and look at that and and see it, or you can wait until we get to linear regression and we're gonna cover all of this stuff again. Okay, and then AB line just adds in that regression line. So we have this best fit line, and I can't put this on the screen without saying this is a horrible fit because I can see there's nonlinearity in the relationship between MPG and H and horsepower, and a nonlinear and a linear equation just does not fit that very well. So we need to, this wouldn't be, this isn't a very good model. All right, this, this, um, this simple for a linear regression just isn't quite good enough. 
there's things we could do to make it better though. Um, and I can show you that, but not now. We'll do it later. In any event, there you are. Okay, that's using formulas. Why is it cool to use a formula? Well, I mean, you know, what if I didn't care about this? I wanted to do, I don't know, what's something else in my data? We can do, um, oh, let me find it. I'm just going to real quick, for no good reason, hit a thing here and let's put displacement. Um, so DISP. So that's how basically how big the engine is. All right, I'll change it to DISP. Okay, and boom. Rerun that, and, and all, everything has changed. All right, the line has changed. The scatter plot has changed. The fact that linear regression is still not the quite right for this. We don't fit the all the assumptions of linear regression to make this the right model. Um, is hasn't changed. That's still this still a bad model, but that's okay. We we haven't gotten there yet. Um, and bing, easy peasy. Um, maybe I don't care about that. Maybe I think there's a relationship between horsepower and displacement. Ooh, I can do the same thing. Bing. And looky there. Much more linear relationship. Has heteroscedasticity, it looks like to me, but you know, we can deal with that. And yes, I know I used a big long stats word. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. Okay, so these are formulas. They're really cool. Totally worth a worth a use. Next. Generic functions. We've been playing with generic functions for a while now, but they're another thing in R that are that's a little bit confusing. So, for example, we're going to use the generic function print. And in fact, we've already used a generic function plot, right? Because plot basically depends on what data you give it as to what it's going to do with that data. Well, the same thing happens with a number of other functions. So for example, let's look at the print function. All right. Um, print, P-R-I-N-T. Print is a kind of a special one because it's so general you don't even have to actually type it so let's start out we can type in hello world um some computer science textbook like i don't know when maybe back in the 60s i don't know a long time ago uh, maybe the first one decided that your first program should be one that outputs hello world because the computer is saying hello to the world um i did that's where that comes from i don't know why we have to do that but anyway bang prince hello world isn't that wonderful but i can also use the same function p-r-i-n-t to print um the empty cars data set right and when i do that it prints out this data frame and look at how much difference there is between how the data frame prints versus how hello world prints Hello world basically is printing a string out to the console. And in fact, we can even come in here and I think let's put in quotes equals false and run that. Well, it still has that in there. Hmm. Quote equal false. Ah, I'll have to go back. I'll go back and look at that. Meh. In any event, it had that fun it had different arguments in there. Oh, because I put it in the wrong one. I'm sorry. That's that's my problem. Duh. Hit tab. All right. Doesn't have anything in there. So Q U T E equals. This is probably just gonna fail, and then I'm gonna look silly. There we go. No quotes. Hey, hot dogs. All right. So no quotations marks around our string. All right. Easy peasy. And print empty cars. These are two totally different things. This is a data frame. And this is a um well a, a string print is handling both of them there's actually two different functions all right print is a is a wrapper function for a whole list of other functions and so essentially what it does is it says okay what data did you give me and then goes down and tries to select the proper function to print it and prints it out now print is kind of fun because 
you can do this in a couple of different ways. One of the ways you can do it is by typing out print. Another way you could do it is just typing the variable empty cars and R will just assume you meant print empty cars. Easy peasy. Um, the other thing you could do is um, if you want to look like a really cool kid, say you want to do A and store in that 5 plus 3, I think it was, something like that. I think that was from your case. And I want to print that out. Well, if I put a parenthesis in front and a parenthesis in end at the end, guess what it's going to do? Still prints out the result. All right, so instead of typing A again to get it to print out, you could just encapsulate the whole thing in, in parentheses. And if you want to look like a really cool kid in, on the R block, you do this. I don't like it very much for the simple fact that, you know, basically matching up parentheses is difficult enough as it is. And especially if I have kind of a complicated long statement that I have to deal with. Adding one more set of parentheses just doesn't help the readability. So I don't like the encapsulating in parentheses method, but hey, there it is. So this is an example of a general function. Another general function is summary. And summary will do a lot of things depending on what it is that you give it. Um, you can give it all kinds of different um, 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 things like for example a data frame it gives you a bunch of, of summary statistics for all the variables in there if you give it a simple um, if you give it a simple vector right of numbers a numeric vector it just gives you the min the max the, the um, this is basically kind of like the five number summary only there's one two three four five six it adds one more by adding the mean um, the, you know, the average of the data. So, you know, easy peasy. Um, and if I gave it the summary of this fit, it would give me a summary of the linear equation of the linear regression. We're not going to do that right now because we haven't covered that yet. We'll do that later. And then the final one, we've already seen this one plot and plot will plot different things depending on what it is we give it. Right? So, this command right here is essentially equivalent to what we did up here if we put mpg and hp right back, horsepower. All right, so this command and this command over here that I'm showing in the, in the lecture basically is going to give you exactly the same plot. Um, you know, which one do you like? It just depends on the style, All right? What, what are you doing at the time? Um, but they are absolutely equivalent. But notice how different, this is really, really different because here in the, that what I've typed out here in line 21 that I have highlighted, I have a formula and a data frame. On the other hand, in the lecture notes, I just have two, two variables. And in either case, I get a scatter plot. All right, that will do it for um, this lecture. I will talk to you next time.